Melody. Please. Greetings and welcome to Snarky Wizard, I am Zion, and today we're gonna talk about Lost in Space Season 2. This particular adaptation, mostly through the series continues to impress with its extra-jaring special effects, which creates an immersive world and keep being loyal to the science fiction suspense and plot armor. And not plot armor is not always bad, it's a classic characteristic or feature in the original series, so why not use it again in this incarnation? So let's hit the road and marcha the plot. The second season picks up right where the first one left off with a split protagonist, the Robinsons. The Robinsons, a stranded in a strange star system that the rover warned was Tanya. They are eventually able to reconnect with the Resolute, only to find its colonies evacuate to a nervy planet and a terrible, terrible secret. Within the Resolution Engineer Corps, the entire colony ship was built around the remains of an alien ship that crashed on Earth, the so-called Christmas Star. An slave robot called a Scarecrow has been piloting the Resolute back and forth from Earth to Alpha Centauri. The Robinsons also met Ben Adler, a senior Resolute crew member who had bond with a Scarecrow that has a similar connection that will Warning, spoilers ahead, the good. Like in the first season, solid cast and acting, especially from Parker Posey or Dr. Smith. It is too easy to hate her. The robot is not longer a servant, enriching its relationship with Will. As I said in the plot, the robot origins are explored further. The visual effect budget remains money well spent. John and Marine Robinson continue rekindle their relationship. Judy keeps being exceptional, the prodigal child. Penny still tries to find herself and to be noticed. And Will, well, he proves to be better suited to space than the result of air suggests. And Smith, well, Smith keeps her manipulates selfish ways. As I said, who doesn't love to hate Smith? The bad. Season 2 of Lost in Space mostly stick to its formula. Danger and Race Against the Clock, followed by another Danger and Race Against the Clock, while the family speed and connect and speed again, and so on. Sometimes tends to be boring. The Smith art and the Robinson's ingenuity or naivete is too absurd. How the hell Smith keeps playing with their feelings and minds? I know this was partially the 60s Smith arts, but even there, all the characters, with the exception of Will and perhaps the robot, didn't trust the dog. Besides, his butt was so ridiculous that he was a funny relief, a kind of Willy Coyote in space. But the dynamic that this incarnation creates between the Robinsons and Smith can be sometimes tiresome. The only and conclusion. Why, why, why? They didn't arm themselves with printed guns. And I'm not in favor of firearms, but come on. Danger Will Robinson. You don't got to a gunfight with a saw? So why do you confront some menacing alien creatures with rudimentary weapons? You have guns, people, guns! The introduction of Judy Biological Papa and his role in the apparently Ness Humanity adventure using stall alien technology were really, really a good twist. And I would have loved to know much more about it, but surely they keep in these interesting bits for the next season. So well played Netflix, well played. Conclusion The show keeps being faithful to its quality and target public, a show to be watched and enjoyed for every single member in a family. If you liked the first season, probably you will enjoy more some details about the second, like the relationship between the robot and Will, and I'm sure that you will watch the third one. Well, that was my really, really short, pleasant, snarky take. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Join us and become Geek Paladines. Adiós. Es una